Welcome to the country of Uganda in Eastern Africa. Like many parts of Africa, Uganda is a land of striking contrasts. But not everything here is this black and white. We have Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world and the principal source of the River Nile. Our vibrant culture validates some of the stereotypes about Africa while shattering others. Our capital city Kampala is home to more than 2 million people and is nestled between seven original hills. Kampala is a bustling metropolis and has been ranked as the best city to live in East Africa. It has universities, sports teams, nightlife, shopping, and many things that most of the world has never seen or tested before. Meet Gertrude Njuba, co-founder of Blockchain Africa, a fintech company focused on developing blockchain use cases and real-world solutions for the public and private sector. She is also senior presidential advisor and a government official working on land registration issues. We depend on land a lot. People work on land, they spend all their lives on land. It's not like in the first world where people live in the cyber world. <laughs> we live on land. So people come in my office like, like patients go to hospitals. Nobody comes with a happy face. So either side is saying this is the right title, this is the right title. And you, you, you don't know how it came about. Usually it's because somebody in the registry made a mistake. January this year, I attended a summit in Hong Kong which talked about blockchain. As explanations went on, I saw that Uganda needed blockchain technology for many things, but most of all, for the land registry. Meet Professor Eriabu Lugujo, the Vice Chancellor of Ndeje University, the top private school in the country. His university is home to more than 8,000 students. And he has many ideas on how blockchain can improve their academic record keeping. The private university depends on tuition, mostly on tuition. Some students come here and they say we have paid in the banks, and yet they haven't paid. Or they bring in forged receipts. Therefore, if blockchain comes in and says that it can increase the efficiency in collection of fees, that will be the lifeblood of the university. So when we give an individual a certification, the certification must reflect his capability the employers are worried that the students also tend to falsify data. But blockchain, I think, is going to be a big intermediary between the universities, between academics, and the private sector. Let's listen to Joseph Semoemba, Chief Executive Officer of Care Motors in Uganda. He knows how blockchain can improve supply chain and inventory management. Uh, it will be really of uh, good importance, more especially in the area of the reconditioned vehicles that come from all, all parts of the world, um, where incidentally the emission standards are that high and uh, whatever falls below bar is what's sent down here. So we might need to be able to trace backwards and say, look, uh, what is the status of this car? So um, we get those challenges uh, uh, when these cars are just dumped in our market. Uh, people will be quick to buy because it's a cheap car, uh, looking at the disposable income. But uh, in the long run, they are such a health hazard to the people and the environment. Blockchain technology is the smartest thing to go for right now and uh, it's the best that can happen to the world. Let's move on to Lillian Navodime, world-renowned sculptor and senior lecturer at Makerere University. Blockchain can protect her intellectual property rights. My husband lived with HIV AIDS and I didn't know how to handle it. No one was there for us. So when I got an opportunity to go to the UK to study a PhD, that's when I found out that women we are much affected with the HIV AIDS. Those living 
with HIVs and those affected like me. I don't have HIVs, but I was affected because my husband was living with HIV AIDS. And then that was the turning point to decide to develop sculptures that can communicate HIV AIDS. I've done several artworks, but finding market for these sculptures is the most difficult thing. Blockchain can take a record of, uh, of the artworks of the Ugandans, and then that means they are registered internationally. Then a blockchain can expose them, but at the same time, they are protected. Finally, let's meet some members of the Blockchain Africa team. They are all members of NetLeaders and are implementing these and many other solutions on the Dascoin blockchain. Think of record keeping, smart contracts, remittance, financial institutions, value chain promotion and much more. We wake up every day and go and tell people about blockchain technology. We are talking to government, we are talking to the private sector, basically trying to educate people about the blockchain technology and uh, asking them to adopt it and actually integrate it into the systems that they are having right now. We expect that uh, this technology is going to add value to everything that is coming out of Uganda. Honestly, with blockchain, I think the sky is the limit for Uganda. There is a lot we can do with the Dustcoin blockchain all over Africa. If we can implement these solutions in Uganda, then we can implement them all over the continent and throughout the world. Unlocking Africa, one block at a time. Blockchain Africa, working in association with net leaders and Dustcoin.